as I think you guys have hopefully had time. Thanks for the academy for starting credit. Um, this week's challenge is slightly involved, but it's also exciting. And you know, it shows that we trust in you to do some complex and relevant work. Um, so let's see who understood what the ask is and yeah, any other thing that people understood. Did you go through the challenge? What do you understand? What don't you understand? Okay. Um, I'm just I think it was changed ultimately, uh, Michael. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So, good afternoon. in the general sense, I think uh, we are developing uh, a system to, to 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 build a storyboard. So, I think basically, I think we are replacing designers or or maybe we are creating a creative director like uh, like that has uh, design skill and text skill and uh, uh, story building skill. So, so finally, the user will put a, an asset and a text. So based on, based on that, we will uh, produce a storyboard and, and uh, a frame. Then based on the frame, we will uh, generate a final storyboard. That's uh, just of it, I think. Okay, some things might be okay, but I think there so the details Maybe others can expand on the details. You know, from the general aspect. So the the general aspect is here, um, and then there are specific aspects, right? What is the ask? And maybe we will just have to, of course, we'll have to. I think then it's a big project, so in its own. So you have to narrow it down to 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 get to a good result or to at least something to explore. So, but the general aspect is, yeah, it's a storytelling. I mean, the title speaks it, semantic image and text alignment, storyboard synthesis, but we, to achieve that there is a lot in the process, but you, we are actually interested in a certain aspect of it more than others. So who understands? Some of the details. Salam Awit, do you want to go? If you've looked the challenge document. Yes, I've looked at the challenge document and I have a rough understanding of what we are yeah. expected to put, not details necessarily, but. So my understanding is we need to use the uh, LLM concepts and just create uh, not just text textual based output, also image incorporated type of output. That's basically my general understanding of it. Yeah, but what just in particular, if you just say the text and the image, what are they just uh, based on just your rough understanding? I didn't get that. So I think the text and the, the image. The text is the, the, what is the text and what is the image? Just, uh, you know, what, what are the type of the texts and the type of image that needs to. I'm not sure. It's, I think it's for an advertisement. That's what I understood. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So it's an advertisement components right add components so text yes. are descriptions of what that could look like and how it should flow 
from point to point and time in time, from one time to another time, from one point to another point. And it's, yeah, synthesizing that. Okay. Um, Derechi? Okay. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, um, in my understanding, so just from the simple, so just we are going to build a story, a common story board. Uh, so, as the first time, we just we give a text, and uh, finally we get uh, an image. I think it is maybe if I'm not confused, it is just like stable stable diffusion model, but it's a little bit this is uh, more complex. So, uh, like for example, um, just now a little bit about stable diffusion is we give uh, a text, then we interpret the models, interpret and then get a, an image, right? So in this, so. First, uh, we also just give a text, but let's let me say, for example, uh, an example. So let's say a traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony with uh, people dressed in culture. So when we are just building this story, the first one is uh, we need to just brand ident identity. Uh, just to build a uh, storyboard. So the first one is explore uh, Ethiopian tours. Uh, our objective is uh, just uh, promote the uh, tourism to historical and uh, maybe cultural sites in Ethiopia. And also the guide, there is also a guideline. So maybe the guideline is just uh, highlighting the beauty of Ethiopian landscape. And uh, there is also a concept a concept is also just uh, it is uh, exploring different sites of uh, Ethiopia. So, and then after this, we can just process, just give a text interpretation, and uh, then generate image. So, uh, then after generating the image, what we are doing is, for example, just we get the first image and the first second makes the second image so finally we are going to just build a storyboard composition uh, arrange the generative image into a sequence to maybe current storyboard so yeah that's what i'm understanding yeah um it is good um but there is also misleading in some sense because actually <clears throat> An ad concept is very different from a concept of the um, the actual fact. An ad concept is what is the advertisement concept. So it can portray, in your example, Ethiopia as an animal, or it can as a paradise, right? So now it's not about concept of like uh, a certain, you know, it's the so concept of an ad that's very different. So one has to be very careful to not translate just the direct part. An ad concept is for just like a story concept. A book has a concept, you know, like some book that is written, like a fiction book probably has a concept. It is maybe a crime detective or, you know, a love story. So there is a, a bigger theme. And then within that, each chapter or each each flow may have also its own breakdown so in this case if it's a book the type you know that the kind of the concept of the book like has certain concepts and then within each chapter there is also like if you if you call them frames then there's also explanation and the decomposition of that concept into frames right okay so maybe these two people would fall in love here in this chapter and then later they would encounter some issue and then in the other one they get back and happy ending right so it is that kind of a story and the concept means not really factual it could be it is just a concept in a in an artistic sense so that is one and also the focus in particular 
should not be so of course image generation is one just it's a prompt in that prompt of course you need to edit it or generate it in that case uh, uh, earlier is described the decomposition of a, you know one query query expansion is one so basically the query is a single prompt or a single story like earlier as mentioned for example ethiopia whatever and then that can be expanded in to form a series of images to add so that's image editing but in this case we want you to explore and and do stuff and it's not the focus task one the generation aspect of it is less here just for the sake of i think the most important part is the task two and i think i'm gonna i mean there are hands so let's follow maybe at this one. and then um yeah so it's good like these things helps us to identify what is and what is not so so i think that part is at least clear so now this one, let's hear what's your understanding good afternoon uh good afternoon. my understanding of uh, the project is uh we are going to build a storyboard uh, and for that storyboard we will have the uh, ad frame and that ad frame is uh, its uh, composition of uh, assets that assets uh, can be a uh, logo picture uh, text action button or end the background and for uh, so uh, our job will be we are going to do we are going to develop uh, an algorithm to identify the composition for example the size and maybe the position of maybe the logo this is the position uh, or the color composition so we are going to build this and algorithms to identify this composition this is my understanding perfect i mean this is the closest to the very heart of the problem or the challenge so it is correct in principle you can use i think we are we have given you the the ads with components so you have components a logo the background image and other images so you can use that so so you don't need to create your own um image you know for just completion and testing you can but the most important part is that let's imagine you are using an existing um image or assets because that in itself is work so a lot of to get here there is a lot of work you have to know first is generating the story first is before that is generating the the um, concept you know and and before that is to analyze actually to do some rank there's a brand bible you know that the brand bible is basically means what the brand wants and what is allowed what's not allowed you know you analyze the brand uh, the, the brief basically the campaign brief and then as well as also the the brand and other data you do rag to then generate one concept and from that concept also some uh, decomposition into frames so but that's given to you so that was work but just because we want to fo want you to focus you should understand that maybe just as a writing you know how an end-to-end -end solution would look like but the ask is not that we we provided that text you know what the story should look like what the concept and also frame by frame as well as all you know variations in that frame you know it's given to you and here it's more to understand that to be able to know whether you are doing actually now you have you know the right image or assets and now to put the right assets together and you have to have a grader you know a critic basically when it's wrong it says it's basically the loss function so the loss function we want you to understand it right it and to do loss function means usually to analyze existing assets to measure what should be the loss you know so there is a goal and then they for that goal there is a composition and when you are presented an ad you should analyze it and criticize it what should be corrected so you know that could be a critic so in this case that's exactly what you do the very first part is you do like you know maybe you need to do to do some editing on the assets but that's again you know good if you have time but you don't have to and you can look with autogen for example how to do it and i think we'll share in the middle as well other uh, um, agent uh, frameworks but the most important part is to know if, if i now know give you a bad badly composed 
art and a good, you know, a very, um, from a, a truth, like something that is really well composed, you should be able to distinguish. So for that, there are many types, you know, you can be a rule-based, but, but we want you to use it to build an agent as a critic and, you know, to analyze and so there are two agents. One is composing and giving, and the other one is criticizing. And then based on the criticism and feedback, the other agents, you know, the composer is then, then composes again until, for example, let's say, you get a good composition. And when it's a good composition, then, okay, it terminates. You know, or uh, either you arrive to a good composition or when you are, um, you know, when you arrive, let's say, some predefined runs or conversations. So that part is the key, the heart of it, okay? So you should by hand explore just like EDA, you should explore the asset data, and then also you should create analyzer as well as also um, a grader or a critic. So in, in that analyzer, it, the analyzer should also take into account, of course, the object identification that you know what it is and the color identification position extraction and character recognition and it should also do some text analysis agents you know so that basically that summarizes some of the text key phrase identification narrative understanding because you are giving it to the critic you are giving it a goal and there are two types of goals a particular goal of that um, that ad as well as a general knowledge that you stored from, let's say, what art should look like and what are best practices and style. So earlier, I think someone mentioned um, uh, basically creative admin or creative um, uh, person, right? So in, in just like that, you have to. And so by having your agent to have these skills, these are called skills, you know, the the object identification, color identification, position, etc. You can assume them like skills. These are just prompts. They can be a combined prompts or one single prompts for each of them, right? And then, so they, I think, as I said, they must have a knowledge base in a sense that a good practice of a good critic must have seen. You know, if you teach somebody, so you can, you should teach this agent how to be a good critic. And for that, it needs a knowledge base, right? You know, books that it needs to read and things like that on what is good, you know, when overlaps happen, you know, what is a bad composition and good composition. And you, the template also, you pass the composition, it can be just uh, a text that says, I'm going to put this image on this location and this image on that location on that, or you can give it just the composed image or a both of them, right? So you have to be creative to know, you know, what works. So that means you have to design the template, you know, what, what should be the communication between the agents. And basically, the, then once, of course, that is the critic agent. So this one is basically the analysis, automatic asset editing, asset editing, or critic, you can call it critic agent, or grading, critic or grading agent and the other one is of course you know um this one is it involves learning and edas and you know having a knowledge base and all that and the other one is okay but building based on prompts of course you know what is like layout planning agents so that means this, these are not actually agents these are actually skill it can be a skill so that you don't build too many agents so one agent can have multiple skills. So in the same is before. So so skill normally in this sense, if you don't, if you know, is it's a much more of prompts. You know, some form of prompt templates, prompts combined with some templates. It's basically just for it. You know, it will know. To use that skill means to use that prompt to do some work right so it's like that um okay so then the image composition agent would would could have a number of skills including layouts planning 
and design aesthetics skill and narrative flow skills. So that means it would use these skills to then do stuff and finally generate. Again, it can generate only textual based. Okay, you know, place this one there, add, edit. So instructions, it can generate instructions, but also instructions plus, you know, the actions that it was it has performed plus the actual, the final image. So that's again the output to be. So once you do that, of course, by having, you know, the critic and uh, the composer after playing, you in principle will build the storyboard. And, you know, so that's basically then you compare, for example, for existing, for existing um, ads, you can compare your performance. How is your, your agent doing compared to humans? Because the ground truth is exactly the same as you have ragas. Now you can build your own, um, this, you have now a storyboard you created, which means the, the generated storyboard. And then the storyboard of actually what is proposed. Of course, they are not, you know, there can be many storyboards. So it's a slightly different. There isn't a ground truth here because it's a creative process, but you can at least compare visually. You know, you can have, you can build something to visually compare and say whether it is acceptable or not. Okay. And so this is, um, this is the, the main part. So let me then open it to questions. And if it's clear or if it's not clear, if it's confusing, if some of you, of course, don't know ad, you will struggle also to understand, but hopefully the background is given, um, is enough for you to understand all the references. Is it clear? Any question? Yeah, Michael. Okay, so I have two questions. The first one is what is like storyboard and frame? What is the difference between storyboard and frame? So a storyboard is, I think if it's given somewhere, maybe. Uh, maybe in the data, it might be given already. So there are certain storyboards. Um, maybe it just is not, I don't have that. Uh, so this is. On page four, it says. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, there is it's a uh, link, but it's. Not. Yeah, it's because it's um, what do you call? It is uh, data that is zipped. That's why it's like I probably won't have also here. Um, do you have the stories? Um, Nathaniel, if he's here, yeah. he has his computer. Can you just uh, mm -hmm. let me open it? Share, share screen share. Okay. So basically, you know, while he's opening, it's a storyboard is basically then you put everything together. So that means frame by frame, you put it. So it's like if it's a video, if a video is an ad, a storyboard is what goes in each frame. So you, you outline. So in, it, in this frame, this object is here, this object is there, this object is there, this, and then this follows. So, so for example, this is one storyboard. So the first board, like the first time it appears, the some of yeah, so some of the the assets that are coming in the first element is if you just keep. Uh, I mean, there are many types. So let's just look the first one. I think you are, if you just, yeah, just let's not move, change anything. So here, so the first one is like, okay, you are going to use the assets. Um, oh, what is changing? It's moving. Okay. I'm just so, trying to increase the size. Yeah, don't worry. Just, this is fine. So the first one is, as you can see, just, okay. So this is on a 320 by 480, then some of the assets, some of the logo, some of the interaction element, the hand, whatever comes in. In the second frame, when interaction happens,
Yeah, okay. Sorry that I was disconnected. Um, so, yeah, so that's a storyboard. And you are saying, what is a frame? Frame is just one frame. Is that clear, Michael? This is a board. So what you are seeing is a board. That means you, it, it lays out everything. Can you hear me? So a frame is like the, the first one is like, can you call the yeah, first frame. one a frame? Yeah, so that's a frame. So that means a frame is composed of the assets? Yeah, and uh, a storyboard is composed of frames. Okay, so in this no, not only assets, so, yeah, exactly. So their placement, their you know, other details. You know, what you know, for example, that it's normally frame, but you, it, it has associated it's a goal. So you have to do, for example, it's only when it's clicked, you know. So that part is controlled in the storyboard, like you have to present it in a certain way. So maybe i think this is where you don't have to worry like that is the story maybe so in the story i think the story probably takes into account that so the first frame is when before engagement so the story takes it so yeah again you don't have to worry when you when you look at the story which is shared you will be able to see that what each frame are and how they, they are sequenced so that part is already in the story Yeah. So, so the assets are like uh, the assets are given, right? We don't have the to assets. You can assets. assume for now given. You don't have to generate them. Of course, part of the ask in the past was to start to to try to generate them as well. But for get, for now, let's focus because it's already what is given is so complex. You know, trying to spend time there, you will not have any time. So assume you will use just what is given. Um, so maybe. Can you change um, Nathaniel to show some of, yeah, like what the data? You have unzipped them, right? Yeah, the assets and uh, the final port is a final frame. Yeah, but no, it's just like the, just the data. Can we just look at the data? Uh, okay. Just yeah. the, the folder. Okay. So, yeah so here is the data and the challenge data is that inside the challenge data yeah we we have uh, uh, two zips so add your storyboard examples as a zip and also challenge data as a zip so if i open the challenge data as you can see we will you will have uh, assets and also so each assets of in the uh, challenge.csv you will have a preview link which is the final uh, storyboard of each assets and the game id will be you will find it the same as so we have the game id of right here as you can see and when you open that you will see each asset so for example this is a preview so you will open it and this is the end frame and in the background, and after that, the CTA button individually, and you will find the actual in the frame. And also, another ones you can find the engagement animation, and the other one is engagement instruction and game one. So, you'll find each individual assets and the, also the composed part too. Yeah. So, we have also a story. Yeah. from this and those, right yeah yeah and we can actually go and find this one so for example let so me just like so uh, this is zero eight two two yeah it starts at eight five eight five four so if i go and look eight five four yeah if i can but no. 
So maybe let me just share the yeah, whole screen. Just, it doesn't you. matter. It doesn't matter for that. Just for any. Like if he shows just for, for any. For any. Let, let me just open this one. So let me just reshare. So as you can see. So I, I hope you can see it. Yeah. So so this is just the actual ad, right? So this is actual ad preview. Yeah. So the story yeah. is composed, and do we have? Uh, so do we have a story for this? Uh, is there? Did they share in 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 some of like this the story the JSON file? Do we have associations like as are some? some of the stories that are presented here are also composed here maybe oh, we can the storyboard them. for this one maybe we can ask the, the storyboard it's fine but the story like okay, the one the, that oh. used to generate so that basically means the json file yeah. you know in the json file if you open you see maybe can you show them just while you are there yeah uh, so just outside maybe just show you So this is the concepts, right? The concepts, yeah. yeah. So this concept is, for example, for one ad. So there is a concept, then implementation. This is frame one, frame two, frame three. Then variations on, yeah. on assets. So as, how assets should be composed is basically for frame one is there, um, and then there are five variations for each for each uh, type in terms of asset composition, like. So this is so what we want is maybe I mean even if you don't have it's fine, but like you can because you don't need like the composition is it is to create a story for it like maybe we'll ask, but to be able to compose uh, such that you have the text description of what it should look like at the end. So for example, background animation, uh, tagline, and countdown times. So this is basically describes what happens in frame one. Yeah. And frame is like that. So in principle, if we had that, they don't they don't have to. That means they can use that asset, or by hand you can actually create it. Or by analysis, you can create it. So that means given the ad, the accessory link that now um Nathanael showed you, which is basically if you uh, unpack it becomes a storyboard. In terms of text, you can actually use uh, either you can write it manually or you can actually use NLM to to write a story for you. You give it the text, the image, and it you know and it shows it gives you the storyline yeah. in this way. So you can, but let's do that just so that everybody doesn't do it. Maybe we will we'll try to do that. If they, uh, maybe for them to this, we will ask Rudio if they have some examples. They don't have that example. We will create one and we share it. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. So then, I think it's clear, Michael. What is what? Yes. Right? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. So then, get Thanks, Okay. okay. Are we supposed to use all the assets that are in the given folder, or we can yeah, use... I mean, I think in principle, it's your the story matters. So it's not so maybe it's the story that dictates. Maybe if we can say that uh, we can transfer our or we can uh, show our message with some of the assets, maybe we can go for. No, no, it's a story. Yeah. It says, I mean, this is not you. Like it's not the story defines that. So, for example, for the first frame, you might only use one image. For the second frame, you might use all images. For the third frame, you might use half the image. You know, it's not okay. Okay. the story so that. In this case, okay. So, in this case, are we going to get the story document and the assets, or we have only the assets? Have so assets and we will try to provide examples for some assets. Yeah. 
the story such that your role mostly focuses on analyzing. So now you, you can start already analyzing, right? Analyzing, given a story, given a storyboard, to analyze whether it's a good story or not. So a critic part of it can be the analysis, the analysis part, task two can be done now. Task two and task one can be done now. You know, identifying images, identifying text and where they are and all that, they can be done. But the, okay. the composer part may will need will require, of course, an additional input, which is a story. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the group policy for this? Um, we are expecting everyone to work alone. Uh, but of course, as always, you can. You can try to work together if you if you want to, but present your work. So it's not a group work. Um, it's everyone just does. And we will provide probably tomorrow uh, just computing, just so that it's faster. Um, and just like as before, we will just assign you in a group, but not to work in a group, but just as a compute group only, not a work group. Just you will be assigned randomly in, in one of the six machines. Okay. Anyone else? Any question? I think there were hands before. Either it's because your question is answered or... Yeah, Michael? Okay, so uh, the project is, I think, in machine learning, right? So there is a concept in deep learning. I think deep learning is also part of machine learning. And JNAI is also a myth. So if you if you can explain what the part of machine learning how in this project, how can uh, we use it? I think so. If you want to be very, very explained to people, you can say machine learning is very technical, you wanna be. It you need to create the features. So it it normally the machine learning time for its time, most of the features are created. So that means it it's it's not representation learning. It will not learn from raw data and learn the representation, what's suitable representation uh, for it. So because examples of machine learning like um, random forest, XGBoost and everything else, you have to prepare the features and you have to do the feature crafting yourself. So that means usually it's called representation. You have to represent the data in a certain way, in a certain feature yourself. Deep learning, you don't, it's supposed to learn. You give it an image and you just, based on just the architecture in principle, it, it should learn the represent, what is suitable representation. All you give it is, you know, the raw inputs and then output the desired output and it learns what is best representing, you know, what be best features to extract. And generative AI is just, um, Deep learning, but a lot more of it. It is aimed at, um, of course, generation. So in the past, the most common generative you could use is GAN, generative adversarial networks. They are deep learning, but they have a certain way of playing games to, you know, uh, a cop, a, det a detector, and a faker, and they, you know, through that process, they they generate something that they become generator. Now, a lot more of the generators are diffusion models as well as LLMs. So yeah, they are just deep learning with um, some network, you know, basically transformers um, as part of them and trained to be, if they are generative normally, it's just decoding only transformers. And there isn't that much that difference. Terminology wise, you can substitute one for the other, but um, it's a lot more when you are saying, I am, I am a generative AI engineer, you mean I work on these areas. Like basically people associate generative AI to a lot more of, you know, diffusers, DALI types and um, transformers and things like that. When you say deep learning, people associate that as you train actually the network yourself. You know, you use like some form of, I don't know, 
uh, resonates, transformers, this and that, but you train and you craft uh, architecture or you do something up like that. When you say machine learning, you are much more, you work on tabular data or image data or other data, but you somehow craft and do EDAs a lot more and just understand as well. But in all of them, there is there's a component that's called you know, ML ops, AI ops, you know, basically data engineering ops and stuff like that, which is then the, the best practices towards production grade um, deployment. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, so in this project, like for the deep learning, maybe you can use it for the analyzing and classifying the assets in the frames. Yeah. Yeah, you are using some deep learning models like YOLO, UNATE for detection, um, and yeah, that. You could use totally also DALIS as well for that, you know, by, by prompting them. But that would be more costier, and if you use YOLO in your machine, it's easier. And, you know, you are using agents, which naturally means they you're using generative AI in that sense. So it's a cross-section project, including when you do, you know, if you are trying to do it manual based, or you can do the same thing with, with random forest. So you can do it with machine learning too, if you want to. Oh, hopefully that's clear, Michael? Yes, and yes, Tina? Uh, yes, so I want uh, a clarification on task two, the one yeah. about the analysis. So uh, this task, from what I see uh, in, is that it, or from what you said, is that it includes elements of using, like basically, um, let's say, traditional events, or it's not traditional, meaning just not using generative AI, uh, like uh, computer vision, like analyzing pictures for, um, like uh, colors and like um, uh, other like what other task? Sorry, just one second. So I'm just reading here. So here, okay. So my question actually, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm like um, I'm trying no, no, to answer the question in my head. So what I'm trying to ask about is that there are parts that include um, deep learning or machine learning models. To, to do some different uh, computer vision uh, like tasks. And there are other parts about like uh, this task about uh, like um, text summarization or key narrative understanding. These are, I suppose, are in, involved with generative AI um, models. So, so my question finally is, uh, is this task about training the models or are these models already capable of doing this stuff? Yeah, yeah, so you can you should just use a model out there just to to do it. You're not, I mean, in principle, if you use just YOLO, you yeah. know, for object detection, text detection, um, and then you can use actually just an, a, a normal Python, you know, uh, PLE or CV to do some color identification if you want to. So you, you yeah. just write, you just write a code using one of them to do that. And then you associate that as a, a tool maybe, you know, for, but also just, just basically it's a Python code that you write, given an object, an image, you will be able to identify objects. So that's basically one type of skill. So within the skill, you can have another skill. So like you just say, you know, this one object identification skill, color identification skill, positional extraction skill, character recognition skill, but position extraction and object identification usually come together. Right. Right. Yeah. So okay. So, like so yeah, my question is that like, yes, I understand this for like uh, the machine learning models or the like YOLO and the other uh, computer vision, but for generative AI, the, the other, like the other part of the task, the um, where gen, gen AI models come into play. I mean, they come, I mean, so I think you guys are trying to find lots of differences where there is no difference. So in okay. a way, if you want to, you can do this one as a prompt as well. Right. Right. You can just ask okay. saying, saying the LLM, just please, you know, for GPT-40, for example, understand this image. And you can tell it, please identify all objects in the image. 
and identify the colors in this way and also just give me the positions the relative positions and also identify each character and it will give you a text back right? or in a certain format so this can be you know there isn't all of them they do the same thing they just pass through a certain network and then they output something but you can also do it using python just actual python code using cv you just say yeah. okay i am writing some python code and you apply you you know given this input run that code so then it gives you the just the objects and the colors the positions the characters so in a way okay. so that part is and the same is here we're just decomposing it such that it has some structure so because most of them for analysis you might want to analyze the image and then what is the text in the image as well and but we could have distinguished it as color separate other skill right so and things like that so and then the other part and this one image composition it's another you know you could just manual would be okay take uh, logos if it's a logo you know put it there and and how do you know it's a logo maybe just you might go and ask what you know what this image are or you might by by hand manually label given their uh file name you might just use that as as a thing but you know as you work on a different image you don't know what the file name structure is so maybe you need to ask the llm you know for what it is uh, you know to just label it for you each image each assets and then also in the process to size scaling and stuff you know? so that part is the composition now the composition you can make it hard on yourself to do everything in code or just basically you know a hybrid a man human assist that means you give you provide everything labeled so that you don't send too much things to the llm but more only you get either llm or no llm at all here as well you could just do it manual again just skills you know the, the layout planning skill the design aesthetic skill and narrative flow skill so in a way, anything here is more about what you want to do. It's just you can choose everything to be manual. You can do some parts just with a normal Python code. You know, just how do you place things? And you or you could use LLM as well, just to help you. Yeah. So um, I have two more questions if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah so yeah. so yeah. So like that people, so that's why it's good. Also, tutors ask so that it, it helps everyone to yeah go on yes yeah, so in the image composition part so there is like a where or it is actually stated that we are looking for the optimal positions so here like um how do we measure optimal you don't know like, you don't know optimal position so that's why you need probably you know you need to probably to learn that from yeah. a knowledge base is it so, is that some kind of like fine tuning or like come some we're no, using no, some data like, for like, learning is it so so for example if i give you a number of play images can you extract can you learn from that rules yeah. for your okay. agent i see so we have some data to learn from basically. because we, yeah, we have a number here like we gave you examples of uh, storyboards that okay. are made by humans i see and then like so we in can principle use you could have trained also you could have trained you know deep learning for that so that right. it does automatically yeah in principle if you're willing you can just take some yolo or something and you know given a sequence of inputs it merges them All right. and it's learning you know it, you are training a, an algorithm and it could be a machine learning a random forest algorithm to do that just to basically um, predict the positions of each plate, you know, given items and their descriptions that, you know, a random forest is learned to determine where to place, you know, and, and how orders of the assets, you know, the order as well as the location it predicts. I see. So uh, can, I, can I think of the task too as uh, like, basically is the step of learning basically i'm, I'm like uh, yes this one is yeah like this is just you know this is a learner and 
it's so in a GAN sense, so if you went to, to apply a generative adversarial network, this is the faker, task three is the faker, and task two is the detector. I see, okay. Okay, all right, that's, um, um, okay, thank you for that. So, okay. yeah, Hopefully that's- others understood or have more questions, so. Yeah, for, for me, that's maybe just like comparing it with GAN is, is, is helpful. So last thing I want to ask about is in task two, in the second part, text analysis skill, the last one is narrative understanding. Can you explain this? I, I don't get it. Just order. How do you order things? Like how does, for example, if it needs to have more frames per per one frame, in a sense, subframes, you know, what comes to what? You know, what hides what? So in a way, narrative is this, you have already the narrative, but how do you translate that narrative? So of course the planning, uh, sorry, it's here. The planning, it's basically plans things. And in, 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 uh, normally, the when we think of planners and agents, usually they plan the entire thing just from, okay, to get to the goal, right? So here the planning is slightly misused. So here it's more of you're planning about assets, position, size, orientation. But you could think of it order here as well. And aesthetics is much more like, okay, now I am, you know, I have planned, but can, can I build aesthetics by like correction? So for example, you know, once it's placed, the, the designer, the aesthetics also just adjusts the position such that, for example, if there's overlap, it does this or that. Or if the color doesn't match, it, it moves things. And the narrative is that, okay, then it also respects the, the story. So basically it's more of an editors, right? So this edits the narrative aspect of it, this edits the aesthetics aspect of it, and this edits the overall placement of it. So it's mm -hmm. break down into that, into, you know, you can break it down even further such that you apply correction. So once something, and then you apply correction such that, you know, the agent is, you know, a much more modular agent. Okay, so like, um, uh, is it, our, I mean, to what let's, are we? Let's think of it humans. Okay. Let's put up humans. What do humans do when you give them assets? They first put it here and there for it to make sense. Just roughly, they would probably place in different layers like they have image they create in adobe they create layers and put image here and there and there so through mask and stuff and then after that they just move shift things you know change sizes maybe transparencies maybe the colors things they edit their thing to get to the you know their first draft so if you think of it they they edit for aesthetics they edit also like oh you know did actually the ordering of it did it really is the background covering my staff and you know does that really is that what i want so it, it it's just the meaning aspect of it and i think means is like that this is representing the actual meaning or concepts that is written mm -hmm. so it's, it's important to think of it as creative director and how they or the designers how they do it and uh you know you want to mimic that that effect or that human thinking okay so if, so it, was, uh, if it was totally you are training it uh in deep learning sense you don't need to do all this so maybe this is just only influence your architecture but you don't need to once you define an architecture you you show it all the inputs and then it outputs something, then you back propagate, you correct it with a loss function. And your loss function might have terms on positioning, aesthetics, and narrative. Okay. So in, in any way, in any way of thinking, it's almost always we break down things to make to simplify. But this three division is not, it might not be optimal. There might be more you can do. This is illustrative. I see. Okay. Um, all right. 
um yeah i i can roughly get the idea but like uh, i'm still i'm just uh, to be completely honest verbalize, I, verbalize, verbalize yeah, so, so that it gets easier so maybe let's go to get at you and then in the meantime yeah. try to phrase more because it, it helps i mean that's i like this and in principle i want everyone even to ask this this type of question because I think you are now experienced enough to know when you feel good and when you don't feel good. And I want everyone to be like that, to really look inside and see if they understand or if it makes sense or not. And until that, ask. So I think that's a good thing you are, you're becoming a good example. So um, yeah, but Dereje you can, or who was before. Who had, a raise and raised. Is that Gitacho? You have the data access, Gitacho. I think if that is the question. And it's shared, right? Or are we waiting for anything? Not uh, I have shared the uh, challenge data. Maybe uh, can they confirm? Mm -hmm. So can you, I think now I know that it has been long, so maybe that's everyone is tired, but just be proactive so that we can finish it quickly. No one is replying. Is it shared or not shared? Yeah, Hilary? It's saying request, uh, request access. Same. Okay, so I don't maybe, know. yeah. Not tonight. Maybe can we correct it? Maybe it's the same error that you had. So okay. maybe re re upload um, so that uh, maybe re upload. It might yeah. take time because it's around three GB. So I'll just re maybe one other way to do it is just yeah okay. Um, maybe S three access so you can put it in S three and in any way we are gonna use that one later as well when we give the machine tomorrow. So maybe you can just put it maybe as three. Okay, good. Um, yeah, Michael. Okay, so uh, analyzing, what does analyzing the asset means? Like uh, analyzing the color, the objects or the positions? All of them. Maybe. So what is are written? we editing the assets? So Not edit, analyze. Are we teaching the, or, so, yeah, so after teach. analyzing, well, what, will, what will happen? You get an idea like what is is it good or is it not good is it well you know basically critics if i give you a document to analyze what do you do yeah i will analyze this like the, the color should be right and then you just say what is right what is good what is correct yeah. what needs to be corrected so it's a template you you will prepare so normally you can think of it as a rubric grading right so normally in Tain academy your your work is analyzed through a rubric you know, and designing a rubric is one. So you can prepare a rubric. So that means as you analyze, you assign a grade, for example, on, you know, the, on how it is like, for example, aesthetically, you know, you can use its own thing and say like, okay, the planning, you know, the placement is correct or, you know, good means it mirrors all best practices uh aesthetics means color match between you know how color transitions happen it could be like it's good consistency means like that you know logos are placed in a certain way and and uh, interactions don't block something blah blah and so you then you create that from good to bad and and you can use that one as your score final score so okay so after the grading so i was uh, uh, my understanding was we, we have the assets so that uh, you told us you didn't uh, necessarily create the assets we have the assets so we are going to use assets to create the storyboard right yeah yeah so af after analyzing the assets so uh, like for example the you color correct. like the uh, you correct yeah, you send so, it back so basically we so are the first person the, the first person no, you're not editing the assets. You're just saying, giving feedback and to the composer to do some whatever correction. And the composer could edit if, if your feedback says, 
yeah, your color is bad uh, for this image and the composer might then use that feedback to edit. But the analyzer is analysis, it does the analysis. Okay, then uh, after the composer, like we, we will have a frame, yes. Yeah, the composer always returns a frame. So the two are working separately. Task two is just, it cannot be applied anywhere or anyone. You can use it as an independent product. It just profiles and gives feedback on add storyboards and it scores them in terms of, you know, it, it gives you a, a rubrics back. So, okay. So are we like, for example, so in what the, you, the same as consider it, uh, consider it as your submission. What do you get? What, from what? From 10 Academy, 10 X submission. Okay, in this challenge? No, no, just in 10 Academy, just in any challenge, when you submit, you, you submit, you, we give you a challenge, a task, and you, yes. you submit, right? Yes. What do you get? So I'll submit the After report that. in the, okay, uh, some understanding oh. about the project and the tools, the technologies. No, but a report and code, like let's say, you, yes. you, you yes. submit a report and code, and what do you get? Yes. After that. Okay, like, uh, I'll get like um, graded. It is the it will get graded. Uh, yeah, and then also feedback. Yeah, yeah, also feedback. The grade yes. itself is a feedback. Yeah, and what do you if you wanna now improve? What do you do? So I I'll take the feedback then I'll work on it. Exactly. So the composer is you. The tutors or the system is the first one task two the critic the grader so the grader takes your 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 submitted work and analyzes it in detail and designs a rubric that is suitable for the goal and then gives you both you know like basically your grade with with feedback and you do you correct and submit again and the grader puts it back and you know when the grader when you get when you really are good, then you get excellent. So, so we are creating a system, right? Like we, we have a, an asset. Yeah, you are so creating the analyzer, the analyzer yeah. uh, analyze and uh, the, if if something gives feedback be, and score. Yeah, yes. And based on that, I mean, it, it, it composer, doesn't it doesn't care. It just only it only does one thing. It analyzes and it scores the storyboard and it it returns a score to it and then it returns feedback for correction the composer takes this feedback and then the original one and then it will do and then we'll submit back again so these are that's why they are agents they're trying to learn from each other so if you want to really do without agents but with gun you can also use you can train a gun so that's generative adversarial network there are multiple these are deep learning networks Okay, so 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 are we giving like for the Coca from if we take the Coca Cola example? So are we giving all the assets in the Coca and uh, do this process, or are we, are we giving all the no, not the assets, the, the storyboard, the, the storyboard? That's your final work. The final work is like storyboard. So you're giving it a storyboard and it's analyzing it. Now you can basically it's a storyboard. You're not analyzing assets of course you can analyze assets individually if you want to that is only to correct to edit so to edit images appropriately so if you are image editor then you you are basically you are editing assets but here you are actually analyzing assets in the storyboard and how they are you know basically the storyboard itself but to do to analyze storyboards you have to analyze assets right I mean, if you submit a report. So are we analyzing? No, no, the... just like, let me, if you submit, like, think of, if you submit a report and your report have each page, do I not analyze each page? Yes, yes, correct. So just basically, 
A storyboard is made of, earlier we said, a storyboard is made of assets. You know, uh, or frames and frames are made of, you know, and uh, a storyboard is made of frames, frames are made of assets. So that means to analyze a, uh, a storyboard, you have to analyze assets and frames. So in that analogy, like, so we are giving one document. So for the submission, like we are, we are, uh, yeah one like week week tense document so in that case we, we only give the, the the storyboard of the one advertisement yeah. advertisement right yeah the strategy you can use a different strategy but ultimately the goal is that yeah it's like you have a storyboard a submission and then you get from task three you get a score and and from task two you get a score and you know feedback let's get a rubric and you can search in google you know how to score an ad storyboard and stuff like that you, you can get rubrics there as well you can design your own just important parties to understand the process yeah is that clear yes yes okay anyone else or um did you do you have further questions that may assist others? Uh, yeah, so just to finalize what I was asking about before, the analysis part, the task two, uh, it takes, uh, we take in as input a storyboard and the explanation in text from the concept, uh, the JSON file, is that correct? In principle, yes. But it might not, you might also, it might you might make it optional, the story. So in principle, the storyboard? That, the, no, the storyboard is the input, but the storyline, like the text. Okay. Right. Because then in that case, you can analyze human human as well. Human than you know, the ones without without his storylines. But still, you can learn from them, right? So using best practices and that. So the goal would be now to use just the, your knowledge. You know, if it's a human, it will look like, okay, you know, Roughly, it's called. I don't know the goal, but the aesthetics I can evaluate. The orders I can evaluate. You know whether they are. So the general analysis I can do without someone giving me a goal. But if yeah. someone gave me a goal, then I can also analyze based on that. Yeah, I see. So when we were we were talking before about the narrative or the plan, basically, on how you plan the ad or the storyboard. This uh, we can basically. Um, use our models to to extract also this narrative just from the story so the storyboard not from the text Absolutely. yes if there isn't if it's not provided it can actually generate it okay okay i get it uh, um yeah it's clear for me now but yeah okay um it is it is i mean it is not it is complex but at the same time it's not that it is complex from the amount of work perspective but from idea perspective you know in principle if it's a human it's very simple we always do it every day we are given something and we look at it and we say like oh that's ugly that's not ugly oh that's good oh well that's creative that's you know we do this you know i've, right. I've had gives us like a very stretched image we say like ah oh, please just correct that right that's very stretched if you are designing when you are designing every time slide presentations you do that you know you try to place image correctly texts on the side not overlap imagine yeah texts are overlapping images are covering like that i mean that's bad because placement is wrong there when the color is really not matching there are too much colors whatever then you say like okay you know it's like it's just not good but when you see well presented well established presentation you feel good that means basically you are scoring it high because all of the alignments are good you know nothing is standing out for example earlier um there was a presentation by mr right so that's you see like yeah it was great so you already felt you already scored it even if you didn't say it because the placement the color uh you know the appropriateness was matched yeah so uh, another clarification for the se se second part of the um, part three the one that does the image composition 
So in this task, are we taking also as input the story, the, the narrative, the, sorry, the, the text yes. explanation? Let's expect that just so that it is easier. Otherwise, we are asking, you know, so there are, if you even if you don't have that, you can do rule-based. For example, logos are placed upper, uh, backgrounds are everywhere, and this and that. Based on just classification, you can do without. Some of the people do that, actually. They don't apply anything creative in any places. So in principle, you can live without that, but the beauty is if you can integrate. So let's say, let's have the storyline actually extracted from an actual storyboard and use that uh, as a you know to guide the composer so the composer is then we are asking it to only understand that kind of thing and do it well that's it you know because we're reducing the problem let's reduce it so let's make it first simple let's do something and then once we do something simple we can make it a bit more complex afterwards can, can i think of this as like changing the prompt like i can have like a, a fixed prompt just like put this and there this there in a fixed place or like i can take the yeah. concept from the json file as like an input and add yeah. it to the prompt if, if, if you want to really think you can think of as big prompt that exactly does that and guides it and then gives it to the llm and the llm just does all the editing yep okay okay all right Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Great, you know, that's what people are afraid, that people, everyone would, is going to use LLM now for everything, including their life, you know. So that's a problem of LLM. Just, you can, because everything is language, including editing image, including composing, including this, including that. But it is important to distinguish what is suitable because otherwise it's like you have or you know it's so the super easiest thing is to think of prompts but i mean it's good but that's you can think of that way too but the prompt you can think of the whole world problem in terms of prompts because humans live in, in language space so because computers do in language right it's zero and one is a language Let's put these zeros in uh, next to this one and next to this zero. It's all that. And the uh, CPUs just receive texts, basically. Uh, basically, texts written in terms of parent. And they just manipulate that, just like LLMs manipulate characters and, and, and tokens. So in a way, ultimately, when we think of LLMs as engine, it's that. It's a language engine. The language faculty. Yeah, suitability is then the, the, the key element that one has to like is it really am I am I using LLM wrongly? That means like when it when I should use something simpler, am I using just because I'm lazy is the question. So at first I really would say do it manual. I think there must be some there, there might be some examples already that are given there so uh, uh, sorry apologies for that and um i think there's probably uh, some image like some notebooks maybe provided but that's a rule based or something so but yeah you can try very simple and then make it more complex as you go and this remember is a 12 week do the best you know, drink coffee if you have to, get excited, you know, become the person you want to be. Like, I think this is hard but exciting as well. You are given the opportunity to probably do something crazy, you know, something good. So don't get pressure, but at the same time, do your best. Bring together all your lessons you have learned. Okay, I feel everybody has hopefully the required information and it's clear so we can stop here michael sorry one final question no it's good 
Okay, so for simplicity, like, can we fix some parameters? Like, the, the, like the user exactly. should give this logo or the it, it should work on like the mobile pixel or yeah. something like that? Yes, you can just specify, yeah, whatever you need just to make it simple. You know, do the very basic, basic that can you can just know, you know, that it works. And then add layers of complexity because it's, yeah, it's a complex project in that sense. The amount of variables you have to, it's a bit complex. So including positions are described by, you know, X and Y, you know, so that means for each position you have two points and the size of it, you have another bounding box. And, you know, so there are many things involved if you want to do it well. So the more simpler you make it first, the easier it gets complex to make it more and more. Wonderful. And you should thank, I think, uh, Michael. I think he's been asking, and I hope most of you have understood, and others who asked and explained as well. And Emptina as well, who really hopefully gave you also just the test how to ask questions as well until you understand something. So great. Um, so happy agenting. <laughs>